is speaking to our political reporter, Latika Burke. Malcolm Turnbull, welcome to Weekend Breakfast. What's the point of putting these bills to the Parliament if the votes aren't there? Uh, who knows? How can you analyse these guys? They're just so self-destructive. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. You know, Julia Gillard didn't consult with the industry, but more importantly, she didn't consult with her own cabinet, as, as we know. This was a, this half-baked you know, bag of uh, proposals was cooked up uh, last weekend and then presented to the cabinet and the Labor Party room as a fait accompli. Uh, so she's, they've only gone along with it because of her authority, such as it is as Prime Minister. And now, if she can't get it through the Parliament next week, and appears she may not be able to, and she certainly shouldn't be able to, what authority has she got left as Prime Minister? I mean, the, 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 she will have stirred up a hornet's nest, enraged uh, the media industry, got everybody offside, and then not even been able to get it through. Now that the bills have been proposed, do you want the chance to debate them, or should we just not bother? Well, I, I'm always happy to debate these issues. I'm, you know, we. We, we welcome debate, a debate about free speech because we are absolutely committed to freedom of the press and free speech. But, uh, I, and, and you know, the, the, the crazy thing about it, Latika, is, and this is what is really going to send a lot of people in the industry wild, in the midst of this whole set of proposals, there are some important pieces of legislation that should get done. You know, the reduction in television, commercial television station licence fees, the changes to um, commercial content, so have to run more Australian content and be able to run, run it over the multi-channels. That's important. There are also some changes to update the ABC and SBS charters. That's important. But because uh, Julia Gillard has thrown this into uh, her assault on press freedom and the establishment of this new bureaucrat, this public interest media advocate, to oversee the content of newspapers, because she's done that, it's quite likely that the whole package, everything, will uh, fall by the wayside. It, it, is a, it, look, it is a shambles. I just wish, they'd, wish the Labor Party had just, uh, you know, whether it's with her or with Rudd, just call this off, go to an election, let the people decide. Now, if you uh, win the election in September, what would your first acts be as communications minister in relation to the National Broadband Network? OK. The, well, the, the first thing we're going to do is tell the truth about the NBN. We will ensure that there will be published a very transparent, very detailed uh, estimate of what the NBN uh, is really going to cost in terms of dollars, in terms of billions of dollars, regrettably, and time, that means years, if not decades, to complete under the current plan. And then we will, at the same time, set out a similar analysis which will show how much time and money can be saved by making changes to the project along the lines I've discussed. Uh, we'll also, the Productivity Commission will also look at the cost-benefit analysis question and we will we'll also uh, expose the whole process uh, that led to the NBN. I, I, I really want to just open the books on the NBN, open the doors. Australians need to know everything about this project. It is, at the moment, utterly untransparent. Uh, you know, we can't e they won't even tell us how much it's costing to pass each premise. I'm going to change all of that. You'll know everything about the NBN and every decision we take about it will be backed up by facts and information, we, we, will, we will make the Australian people our partners, our colleagues, and they will have access to the same information we, we, we have as the government. Unlike Labor, which have basically treated the people as far as this gigantic investment is concerned with contempt. Now, while that analysis is taking place, what will you change in relation to construction? Well, the, the analysis will be done very quickly, I can assure you. Uh, the obviously existing construction contracts, Latika, are you know, have to be uh, honoured. We're not tearing up contracts or reneging on co commitments. But what we will do is, is very quickly demonstrate how you can upgrade broadband services much faster and much more cheaply by using the fibre to the node approach, which, as you know, means instead of taking the fibre optic cables into every house and every flat and every townhouse, 
uh, it means you take it out further into the field so that within a few hundred uh, metres of uh, the premises you terminate the fibre with an electronic device, the node, that then hooks into the existing copper. And because the length of the copper is sufficiently short, you can still achieve very high speeds. More what than speeds, Malcolm Turnbull? Well, they would, depending on the length of the copper, they'd range between, at the, at the low end, and this would only be for a, a relatively small number, I would estimate around 25 megabits per second, uh, and most people would be in the range of 50 plus megabits per second, and you would get under, with short distances, uh, up to 100 megabits per second. And that's, that, that is, I'm, I'm making that estimate based on what this technology delivers in comparable markets such as the UK and the United States. And I've, I've got every reason to believe, based on my advice, we could achieve the same results here. Now, the advantage of fibre is that it's more durable. Copper degrades over time. How would you deal with that in the long term? Well, that's sort of true up to... A, that's that's, that, that's sort of not, not entirely true, Latika. I mean, the, there's no doubt that the maintenance costs for uh, fibre, once it's installed, are somewhat less than copper, but the maintenance costs are not that high for copper averaged over the network on a per-premise basis. Nobody, no, no one would replace their whole customer access network, copper customer access network with fibre simply because of maintenance. Uh, the, the, the bottom line is that you, you, you're better off upgrading the networks as you go and as, as demand requires it. You see, the, the, the difficulty with the, pro, pro, the approach the government's taken of course, is it simply isn't happening. Remember, they're saying they, they want to pass 12 and a quarter million premises by 2021. Well, by June 30 this year, uh, they are unlikely, unlikely to have passed even 200,000. You know, you remember they said in 2010 they were going to pass 1.3 million by June 30 this year. Then in August last year, they said, no, it would be about 340,000. What we're hearing from the industry is that they may only do half of that amount. So this project is proceeding at a snail's pace. They have not been able to get one premise in the, during the 19 months of their you know, uh, full, full build as opposed to the test sites. In 19 months of construction, they've not been able to get one premise in South Australia, Northern Territory or Western Australia that's capable of being connected. So this project is failing. It's just failing, regardless of the cost, even if you're not worried about the cost. And we think this could cost $100 billion to complete in reality. But even if you don't care about that, it simply isn't happening. Now, if you've got lousy broadband now, being told that you're going to be upgraded in 10 years' time, uh, or even five years' time, is pretty cold comfort. Now, when Tony Abbott appointed you the communications spokesman for the opposition, he ordered you to demolish the NBN. Do you think you've achieved that, and no, do you no, still plan to achieve that? No, well, he, look, he, that, 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 was not, that was misinterpreted. What Tony was saying, with, you know, with his characteristic exuberance, <laughs> was that he expected me to demolish the government's argument for the NBN. It wasn't the best choice of words. We are not going to demolish anything. We will be completing the NBN. I repeat, we will complete the NBN. But it'll be NBN we'll, uh, light, won't it? No, it will be NBN cost effective. And it will deliver Australians very fast broadband, uh, certainly uh, more than adequate for their needs. And it's not just going to be all fibre to the node. Don't, so let me be quite clear about this. The, the, you've got to be, treat technology as a tool, not a religion. It is so you, you run fibre into premises where there is either the demand for it, you know, businesses, schools, institutions, etc., or where it is cost effective. Now, if you're building a new estate, a Greenfields estate, and the cost difference between rolling out fibre and rolling out copper is minimal, of course you roll out fibre. Wherever you can do fibre cost effectively, you would do it because it is the best technology. But, but, you know, it, it, you've got to balance, and this is where the Labor Party has just been so reckless, you've got to balance the service level difference, where fibre is undoubtedly superior, against cost. And if the cost is dramatically higher, if it's four or five or six times more expensive and it's going to take four or five times as long, and the service level increase, the speed increase, is not of value to the customer, that's to say they're not prepared to pay for it. Because you've got to ask yourself this, 
I mean, I'll all right, you... Malcolm Turnbull. I'm afraid uh, we have to leave it there, but okay. we could we could talk a lot more about this, and I well, hope I'd, to see you on it. weekend breakfast again. Okay, thanks, Latika.